This is an iPhone. This is a bigger iPhone. This is an iPhone mini. A mini iPhone. A mini phone. And this is an iPhone SE, the smallest iPhone Apple currently sells. This is the point in history when iPhones became uncomfortable to use with one hand. And for me, it was also the point when I realized I could no longer live inside the walled garden. I wanted to do simple things with my phone that Apple would just not allow. So I decided to switch to Android and I checked Reddit for suggestions for small Android phones. Get a Pixel 5, they said. That's one of the smallest Android phones you can buy. So I got one of those, and while I found it to be a very capable phone, I often wondered what kind of substance I would need to ingest in order to convince myself that this is a small phone. I just hated the size, so I kept searching, and my search led me to the only two phones that seemed to fit my needs. The Palm PVG100 and the Jelly Star. These are both truly one-handed phones. They're tiny compared to any modern smartphone. The Pam phone's design is exquisite. It's extremely thin, it's made from aluminium and glass, and it feels addictively nice to hold. It's slippery and easy to drop, yet despite being glass front and back, it's surprisingly tough and resistant to damage. It's also waterproof. The Jelly Star also feels good in the hand, but it's made from transparent plastic. And given that transparent plastic is more brittle than opaque plastic, it doesn't quite solve the fragility problem that a plastic phone normally should. Mine is just a month old and already has damage after just a two foot drop onto a wooden floor with a protective case on. Also, it isn't waterproof. The body is much thicker than the Pam phone and this makes it easier to hold. It's not as slippery as the Pam, but still slippery enough that keeping it in the provided case is a good idea. It doesn't add much protection, but it greatly improves the grip. It has a power button, volume rocker, and a customizable button, as well as capacitive touch buttons, which can be disabled in favor of gestures. The USB port is on the right side, which makes using the phone while charging it quite awkward for right-handed people. The Pam phone charges from a much more preferable location, but it only has a single button for par. There isn't even a volume rocker. Instead, the volume is adjusted through software. For me, that felt almost unforgivable and took a long time for me to get used to. But once I did, it wasn't so bad. It too uses capacitive touch for navigation, but the three buttons are rolled into one, so you'll have to remember the correct number of taps for the relevant action. It doesn't have gesture navigation, so I installed an app called FNG to get gestures that are similar to those on modern Android phones. Both displays are bright and clear, but the Pam phone has the better quality panel. The pixel density is higher, to the point where I don't notice the pixels, whereas on the Jelly Star I sometimes do. The display is also larger on the Pam. It might only be a few millimeters in each direction, but on phones this small, that makes quite a big difference when reading a web page. A more important benefit is how it affects the keyboard size. I can type with much fewer mistakes on the Pam than on the Jelly. The Jelly's display leans more towards cool and bluish. The Pam has a more neutral to warm tone, and I just love the display in the Pam. It's really, really nice. This is where these two phones come to a fork in the road and go in two very different directions. The Jelly Star has a much faster processor, 8GB of RAM, 256GB of storage, which is expandable, and it runs Android 13. It's smooth and snappy and feels like a modern phone. By comparison, the Pam phone with its 3GB of RAM always feels like it's struggling. It'll do the basics, but it's much slower to open apps, load web pages, and it doesn't multitask well. It runs Android 8 and it will never get an upgrade. It only has 32 gig of storage, and a fair chunk of that is lost to the OS and the apps. And some apps, like Amazon for example, are almost unusable. Voice dictation is painfully slow to initialize. It does have a more reliable Bluetooth connection though. In the year I used it as my main phone, I can't think of a single time when my earbuds disconnected unexpectedly. The Jelly Star, on the other hand, loses connection at least once per day. The Jelly Star is miles ahead on features, with the customizable button, the notification LED, headphone port, FM radio, a fingerprint reader, infrared remote controller, and these LED light things, which may seem cool at first, but I promise you, after the first day, you'll forget they even exist and might wish they didn't make the phone several millimeters thicker just to fit them in. 
Neither of them have good cameras. That was never a concern for me. The only time I use my phone to take photos is for things for which the quality isn't important, like shopping lists and things like that. The Pam takes 12 megapixel photos while the Star can do 48. In my opinion, it's battery life that separates these phones the most. The Jelly Star can easily get me a full day of use without recharging. That's with an hour or two of podcast listening, some web browsing, and an hour or two of watching YouTube. The battery life is perfect for me. The Palm phone is a completely different story. When reading a web page or watching a video, the battery life drops about 1% per minute. I need to charge it about three or four times per day. When I use this battery case from Mophie, I only need to charge it about twice per day and that's still not good. If I go for a walk when it's below freezing outside, the battery will go from 80% to the phone is off and now I'm in trouble if there's an emergency in about 30 minutes. The Jelly Star also charges about three to four times faster than the Pam phone. The Jelly Star is by far the more capable phone. It's powerful, the battery lasts all day, it has a huge amount of storage, dual SIM card support, a micro SD card slot, and a much more recent version of Android. It's super small without compromising on performance. It can be a phone for minimalists, but it can also be an option for ordinary phone addicted people who just want something that's actually comfortable to hold. The performance and features of this little thing have surpassed my greatest expectations. It's a super impressive device. By comparison, the Pam PVG100 is kind of a terrible phone. It has a very old, outdated OS. It has a tiny amount of storage, an inadequate amount of RAM. Notifications can be unreliable. The battery only lasts for a few hours and it can be frustratingly slow. But despite all of its flaws, I just can't help but smile every time I pick it up. The display is so vibrant and sharp, and the physical design and build quality are stunningly beautiful. Of course, I like the Jelly Star a lot. It's my daily driver, and I'm incredibly grateful that a company dared to make such a high-performance small phone in a world dominated by phablets. But it's just not a phone that pulls on my heartstrings when I hold it. And so, my conclusion might not make a lot of sense to everyone, but if you were to ask me which of these phones I like more, my head would say the Jelly Star, but my heart would say the Pam phone. If you found this useful or interesting, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.